soon as they hit the girl, as soon as they hit, oh my god, oh my gosh. Biggest fish I've ever had on here. What up, y'all? Welcome back to another vid on the Weston Smith channel. We are out here on the yak today, having a bunch of fun. We got the homies with us. We got Ryan rigged, we got real killer fishing, and we got outdoors with Chuck. Links down in the description. We're actually at a popular kayak spot, man. Summertime, we are throwing down the drop shot, shaky head, chatter bait, and I got a frog for later. It's gonna be a good old session out here, man. Before we get into things, let me take you guys back to the garage. I actually fixed some connections on the battery so that it never cuts out on me while I'm on the water. Did a little soldering work. I'm gonna walk you guys through that real quick. We'll see you at the garage. Uh, it's illuminated, so I'm pretty sure it's just warming up. Now, where is the safest place to set this down? Maybe here. Here's what I need to do. I just essentially need to stick as many of these wires in this deal as I can. Now I need to solder this down. And then I think if I was smart, I would get one of those shrink wraps to put around here. So I think that'll probably be the next step. So I think what you do is you just put this towards the connection and then you start touching it with stuff, but that might be wrong. Now it's getting nice and toasty. Check that out, we got a good amount on here. Essentially all I'm doing is making sure this piece doesn't come loose on me again. So I have uh, put the wires in there and I'm just burning some of this metal that comes on this deal here uh, around the edge of that connection. That way it doesn't come loose. See how it just melts this? Crazy. Oh, there went my support system. Yeah, I don't think that's coming undone now. All right, I think I just need to shrink wrap that. I'm not sure. You guys let me know what's the best thing to do with the excess wire right there because I want to make sure this thing is done just right so it's plug and play every time I get this thing out to the water. And uh, speaking of that, let's go ahead and get back to the pond. Set up already, huh? Oh yeah, I'm ready to go. All right, man, before I get this in the water, let's see if I connected everything properly back at the house. I'm going to connect this. See, this is how you want it, just plug and play. Super simple, but... <laughs> you also want it to work. Moment of truth. Did our connections work? Oh, blade. Stay straight. I don't hear it beeping. Let's just get in the water and find out. Definitely did not beep. Reminds me of day one on this thing. Uh, just took this apart. Maybe I can spot lock without the, without the motor. Check that out. Now I should stay put while I work on the uh, battery and not get the rods all on the trees. I'm trying to just hang out in the shade here. I don't think the solder was the, I think the issue is now I can't push this stuff as far down as I need to onto this uh, wire. Okay, I think what I just did might have made the difference. And okay, now that goes a lot further. Let's just try and plug it in and see what happens now. Now that connection's a lot further. Give this a pull. Yeah, now she works. Yeah, so it wasn't the soldering that messed it up. It's just now I gotta figure out how to get all this stuff tightened back down the right way. Let's see if I can find this chatterbait. There we go. Jackhammer saucy swimmer combo. Switch things up just a little bit here. So I have this Gobi saucy swimmer on 4.8 inch with the underspin and I'm switching it to this chatterbait, a little bit more green, slightly less flashy. The blade is actually color matched instead of silver. So a um, little bit more of maybe a natural presentation depending on who you talk to or what the uh, really what the bait fish are that the bass are eating. This goby color has done well in clear water. We're going to switch things up for today. Maybe get a little bit more commotion in the water from the blade of this chatterbait. And that'll be that. By the way, y'all, this jackhammer chatterbait, Guggen Squad line and Guggen Bait Saucy Swimmer can all be purchased for up to 30% off if you guys have a Carl's Club membership like uh, we do over at Carl's Bait and Tackle. Check the link in the description to sign up if you guys want to save some money on your baits. And we got a rig, boys. Let's get in the water. So another thing I'm figuring out about this kayak is every time you start the remote and it pairs, it has the motor speed on zero. So you got to immediately hit plus a lot of times. Well, what happens is, let me give you a real world example. So I just put the speed back down to zero. So here I'm backed out to the main menu and you'll see it shows zero speed. Now, as soon as I hit plus, there's quick options to go to like five, which would be half output or 7.5. So I just hit this and now you're ready to go with only hitting two buttons. So instead of having to hit plus, 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 10 times to get to five, because it's in a half step increment, all you do is you hit the plus sign and then you just click over that at five and you're good to go. It displays a couple preset speeds. So that's cool, a little shortcut. All right, let's wrap this thing around the neck. Uh, I honestly might come over here to where it seemed a little shallow last time, grass close to the surface and just throw that chatterbait for a minute. Guess I should deploy the rudder, that way I can steer. There's a couple different ways to steer this kayak. You can either have the rudder up and you can just control left to right. So you can literally like have the motor move left to right to steer. Or, or you can just have the prop running and the motor looking straight ahead and then you steer with the foot pedals. So by pushing the left pedal you go left, by pushing the right pedal you go right. So this is 
more common as I'm kind of like cruising across the lake. Then when I start standing up and fishing on this thing, I pull the rudder up. That way it doesn't interfere with the steering of the motor. And I just start going off the motor with the remote here. So I'm finding out new little things on this kayak every day, you guys. All right, so I'm gonna spot lock because this area I'm in right now, the grass comes almost to the surface and I'm sure there's some fish kind of buried down in it that will come up as soon as I see this chatterbait. So let me just kind of get a good old vantage point. Oh, I forgot my sunglasses again. Dang it, dude. I've just been leaving them in the drawer at home. Brandon's getting started over by the other side of the chapel as well. He's cruising over there to where those bridges are. That's exactly where we lost the Zodius and uh, Stratic combo last week. Fishing out here with Ryan, who's on his way as well. We got a lot of yakers coming out tonight. Charles is going to be here. I think I'm going to go see what's up under this dock over here. Got to be some fish under here, huh? Very shocked we didn't find one under there. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Oh, just got a bite. But I'm throwing this big mission fish bait. I didn't set the hook hard enough. I'm using this big swim bait. Cool little spot back here. Ryan is joining the crew, man. Me and Brandon, we're over here just uh, just hanging out at the moment. We're catching grass, but we'll get on the fish here in a second. I'm, I'm about to tie on a shaky head. We're switching things up, man. I always say we're gonna switch things up, but I'm not lying today. Watch this Texas rig. I'm about to say no more. Well, actually, I need to make sure I've got some slim shakes. Here we go. Oh, sweet. I got the bigs, some eight inch green pumpkins. I'm gonna try that. That should work, this water's crystal clear. Let me just keep those on the deck. In case you guys are wondering, this is Big Bertha. This is the half ounce right here by Strike King. Gets down to the bottom quick and I just hop it along and have some fun. That's where we were last time. I'm, fi I'm fine with going back down there. Dude, this is cool. You can set it to where fish brain doesn't show the catches and it just shows the contours. So there's like, yeah. so there's not like dots everywhere. Now it's just showing me the depth. There's a deep pocket out over here. The steepest drop off like real quick from shallow seems to be near this new build. Let me see about this drop over here. Man, check this out. Fish brain coming in clutch. It shows the contour lines and the depths. It's pretty much showing one of the steepest drop offs is right off this point here next to this like gazebo of pretty much the biggest house on the property. So I'm gonna try and hit this point for a second with the shaky head and see if it can't produce. And if so, Got to thank Fishbrain for showing us the spot of the day because that would be totally insane. I've never used Fishbrain to check contour lines specifically, I don't think, but you can literally turn off all the catch positions so there's not a lot of dots on the screen blocking you from seeing just the lines and you can zoom in real good. All right, man, so from here, I am just going to cast towards the bank and bring it on out. Summertime heat, recent storms, I think they're down low, so I'm going to try the drop shot. Just try something a little bit smaller potentially looking like an easier target for these bass. They might just want a little something easier to commit to. Let me work this thing down along this drop here if there's not too much grass. Deep here. All right, let's try the chatterbait then for a second. Then we'll go regroup with the boys and head down the uh, back half of this place. Hmm, cool little zone, that's for sure. We're getting into the zone. Oh, I got some. All right, drop shot wreaking havoc. <laughs> when the going gets tough. <laughs> Just got back here with the boys in the shade. What do you know? We got them on the drop shot. Come here, buddy. Hey, look, it might not be bigs, but it's a fun time. To get a fish makes you feel like, okay, at least we identified where maybe some are at, you know? I got a feeling where you find one of these, you'll find a big one. See you, bud. Hey, I just, the last two, the last two days I've been just completely skunked, so. Yeah. And then the day before that, no, that wasn't our video. Oh, there we go. That's two back to back. Okay, he's actually, he might even be a pound. Oh, I might have caught the same guy. Y'all, they're under the boat. Should I spot lock? Hey, it's all about the spinning gear, boys. <laughs> all about the finesse gear. Man, that thing barely hit the bottom. We're out here for an hour and a half and then two fish back to back. Sometimes you just gotta find them. And I'm not saying these are bigger than the fish you guys wanna catch, but what I am saying is we're starting to get on them. That is a good sign. It's the right call. <laughs> I never throw them. Oh, 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 as soon as they hit the girl, as soon as they hit, oh my god, oh my gosh. Biggest fish I've ever had on here, probably pound and a half. 
This is the spinning gear. Oh, he came off. Oh, came off, dude. That was like a pound and a half though. He was screaming. Oh, dang. Soon as it hit. Sick. That was awesome. And I don't have any more of that color. I don't know if I have any more in general. Hold on, I think I've got, I got murky minnow, which I think is pretty close to what I was just throwing. Time to get a rebate. I don't think I've ever used this color, murky minnow. We're about to see what's up with it though. Basically, it's got that silver flash on the bottom, which is probably pretty key because that's similar to what I was throwing. I think it was green pumpkin pearl. It's probably what is attracting these fish. If so, I'm making the right move, we'll see. Also, somebody commented on one of my recent videos, like, dude, it's just a bass, horse it in. And why is it screaming so much for how little it is? It's because of this setup. It's got very light line on it. And uh, <laughs> this is kind of like the smallmouth setup I was using up north and I haven't changed the line out. So I can't really horse them in or it's just gonna snap the line. Oh, I remember another question when you guys asked me too is how to set up spot lock on this motor, how to calibrate it. And actually mine, I didn't have to do anything, which kind of shocked me. But <laughs> like on the boat, on our Garmin Force, you have to calibrate it with the remote. And on this, you don't even have to go through the menus to calibrate it. If y'all ships like mine, which I'm sure it will, literally just, it was good to go. I hit spot lock, probably the second time I took it out and it just worked. So if that's uh, across the board, that's pretty cool because the calibration process on the boat, and I'm sure it would be the same on the kayak, just kind of means you got to do like a full circle with the kayak on like maybe half speed of the motor and just make sure it's uh, orientation is probably what it's learning and things of that nature. but didn't have to do a thing for spot locks, so no wonder nothing hit the worm. It's got grass all over it. Getting close to that line. So all out in front of us now should get down to about 10 feet. This might be the spot to break out that drop shot again, just to see if we can get a bite and locate if they're hanging out right here, then switch over to the slim shake and really try and get a big one. But I'm just uh, going backwards on that whole idea and I'm starting off with the slim shake. <laughs> Ooh, that shot, boy. Feel I'm in the mood for a switch up I hit the function, hit the rose till I hiccup I hit the stage and leave with money that's a stick up She picture perfect so I told him I'm a flicker Feel I'm in the mood for a change up I leave the city and return with my change up They got amnesia, don't remember how they play up. She's landing, alright Gotcha Those were some cool shots. There we go. Put this thing away on my way over. You've had the Popeyes one. I haven't had that one, man. Oh. I hear it cracked, but. Yeah, you're messing up. But you gotta get the spicy one. Y'all, we're going on a full on mission. We're gonna see if we can go into this tunnel into the lake next door. Whenever I have it on max power, um, I've gotten it up to like four miles an hour, pretty much like with or against the wind. So I'll put it on max. So yeah, you can go faster, I bet. Yep. Paddle, pedal, motor. Yeah, you can definitely pull ahead. The pedal ones can go a little faster, I think. Uh-oh, bumper carts. Bumper carts, boy. <laughs> we have taken the lead. Yeah, I really don't know about this. I think it only drains from that one and comes down or something. <laughs> nope. All right, y'all, we are opting to switch things up, man. We're gonna go hit some banks around here because none of us are getting on fish, and we have hit so much of this place. We have thrown so many different baits between the four of us. The four of us, man. So we're gonna go ahead, make a move, see what we can't find at uh, a little neighborhood pond, I think, next to here. It's been a while since you guys have seen bank fishing on the channel. So get excited, man, because you've stuck around this long. I think we're now about to get a bunch of bites. Uh, speaking of, I'm about to get bit by this curb, though. I better go ahead and stop the motor. She's about 200 pounds decked out as seen, I would imagine. So like 150 with the boat itself and the motor. Then the battery's like seven. Got a bunch of drinks in the cooler. We'll just call that 10. Got the box full of all kinds of stuff. We'll call that 15, probably more actually. That Guggen Squad box is full. Honestly, this could be over 200. <laughs> What'd y'all think of the old excursion? Uh, it was a little bit exciting is what it was. Yeah, this place, she produces, man. <laughs> Hitting it from the bank, we've had some good luck here. You guys know that. And I've also got some friends who've been doing well lately. But uh, the stair two after the storm, they have been a little finicky. You saw I took the drop shot to get those bites. They were on uh, they were on hot alert for a second. And then they said, nah, we're going back to sleep. See y'all tomorrow. Alrighty then. 
chatterbait frog and slim shake let's go find these things i caught like a three plus right off that drain that's where i always lose it man it gets me tied up in the grass to be fair i was standing up there see and i like cast it down into it and, and reeled them up yeah i'm thinking we could go straight for a frog it is nowhere near as grassy as last time Dang it, dude. Right on the edge. I felt the weight when I set the hook and everything. First blow up of the night, guys. Dude, whatever happened to summer top water at sunset? This is next level. There was a big blow up on the bank though, so I just, I am so confused right now. Let's cruise through where that fish just blew up. No way, dude. That was absolutely a blow up right here. Here we go, over by the reeds, coming past this concrete drain. How crazy. Seeing all that action absolutely blows my mind how I haven't gotten hit on this frog. I am going to throw the chatterbait for a second then, and that might be it for the evening. Well, that might be it for me, folks. Holy cow. All right then, well, I'll see you next time. Yeah, bro. Have a good night. All right, guys, and that wraps it up. Thank you all so much for joining us on another awesome night of fishing with the gang. I'm gonna put all the guys' links to their social media in the description. Check them out. And also, I have been getting so many great comments from you guys on the B-roll, you know, just adding in the drone shots, uh, maybe some of those transitions, and just getting creative with it. So thank you guys so much. Let's please keep those comments coming. As far as the battery goes, I just had it charging over here for the kayak. I think those connections are pretty good now. I shouldn't have to worry about it really. I've got those connections tight. So yeah, that should be probably the last you hear about me talking about those connections being bad. And we'll see you guys on the next video where we have a bunch of fun, possibly bank fishing. I really don't know. It might be the yak, it might be the boat. It's all up in the air. Anyways, I'll see you then. Peace. <coughs>